this is a great and easy fun way to update something <clears throat> this is, just happens to be a headboard that I had it's a for a double size bed but you could do it on any application you could do it on a dresser <clears throat> I also did it on some nightstands on just about anything an armoire a buffet anything you want so basically we're just going to lay down a coat of paint I am actually using a chalk paint this is a dark gray color uh just just lay, lay down your first I actually uh wash this and scuff sanded it so that the chalk paint will will really really set the well so just put one coat down real quick and then we'll head to the next step so after you get your chalk paint down i went ahead and grabbed <clears throat> and it's dry of course i went ahead and grabbed a piece of tissue paper this is a 20 by 30 piece of tissue paper that um, i do offer on my website <clears throat> this print was really pretty so I obviously wasn't able to use the whole thing and then I think it would look kind of weird if I did so what I'm doing is I'm taking a paintbrush that I am dipping in water and I'm using it to outline the area that I want to cut so basically instead of using scissors I am using water on a paintbrush to let me make a jiggy line the best part about doing it this way is that you won't have straight lines like you would with scissors and I will tell you when we get ready to apply this it's a much better way than having like that straight harsh line right so basically it's just a paintbrush dipped in water that's all and I'm just kind of going through I'm kind of making it jiggy around the flower um, and just kind of just using it to and sit it just sits for a minute and what happens is it allows you to rip the paper and, and it only doesn't go any further than where you put, applied the water. So then just rip the paper really, really slowly. This is a super easy way. I tear all of my tissue paper this way because I never want you to see a straight line. It's much easier to blend over and to texture over on straight lines. Does that make sense? It's just funny how when you see a straight line like a box, you can really see it. But when you do it this way and you kind of cut it out with, uh, you know, just some water, who knew, right? So it gets the paper wet and you just pull it. And when you pull it, it just makes a curved little jiggy jag line. Super easy, super fun. It looks way better too when you were done. So that was a 20 by 30 sheet of tissue paper. I'm going to use part of it on um, the headboard, but I still had left over for more future projects. So just keep in mind, always try to cut off that straight edge because straight edges just don't look good. So we got that all done. We're going to go ahead and then lay it out on our um, headboard and try to figure out how we want it to sit on there. Like I said, I do have this tissue paper available on my website and I only do sell 18 weight tissue paper. 10 pound weight is not strong enough. You will rip it every time. So don't skimp on tissue paper. Get really good quality stuff. So we're done with that. See how much better it looks? It just looks so much prettier, right? You could apply this to a piece of canvas if you wanted to. <clears throat> so I've got the, the headboard coated with one coat of paint. We're going to go ahead and lay this down. I am taking a clear coat. Now my, my preferred clear coat, I will tell you, is um, the brand is Dixie Belle, and it is satin clear coat. Satin clear coat just is a thicker clear coat. I sell lots of clear coats, but when I am decoupaging, meaning using this with a tissue paper, I only use Dixie Bell Satin Clear Coat because it is like a glue kind of consistency. It doesn't dry as fast as the other clear coats that I have, and it just gives me more workability time. I do not like um, some the, of the craft crafting clear coats they just don't work as well this is going on a piece of furniture so I definitely want to use something that will do good on my furniture so I've laid it out and I'm going to go ahead and put clear coat over the top also okay and I'm going to smooth it as I go down I've already put my my base coat down which is acting as a glue I'm going to smooth it up with clear coat on my brush and I'm going to completely cover it. 
You notice that it's a little opaque. That means it's wet. It won't stay this color. It will dry totally clear. Now, one hint is if you want your flowers to be a little bit brighter, you could paint behind them white. Now, on this instance, I left them gray because I, I really didn't want it to be super bright. But if you, really, I usually paint white behind the tissue paper because that ensures that the print itself will be brighter. So um, this one was fine because we're kind of going with a darker motif. I am just spreading out the top coat and I'm just leaving that hanging down there. We're just gonna let it dry. I did just let this dry actually overnight before I went and did the next step. But really in essence, you know, three or four hours, it should be totally dry. Once the paper is saturated, it um, is very easily ripped. So be very careful when you're using a brush or using your hands because you will rip it um, pretty easily. That's why I do like to use a 19 pound weight of tissue paper. Now, this other part, this is the rest of the tissue paper. I was going to try to figure out how to use it on the other side of the headboard and I thought, why not? So I'm using my paintbrush with the water it's just water, you guys. And before the, the water dries, I just rip it. Just gives me a really cool, uneven rip, which makes it look more natural when I actually lay it down on the piece that I'm doing, right? So just draw it on with water and rip it. Easy peasy, super easy. So we'll do that before we move on to the next step. We will apply this on the headboard just as, the same as we just did the other piece. Um, we'll lay it out, we'll figure out where we want it to go, and then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to put the satin clear coat down first, and then lay the tissue paper on top, and then top coat it. Now the reason that we put the top coat over the top of the tissue paper, for one, it makes it adhere better. For two, it also seals it. So if I were to paint and get like extra paint on it, it would wipe off easier. That's another reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this one on the opposite side of the headboard. I had first thought that perhaps, maybe I might want to add another piece of tissue paper, but in hindsight, I was like, nope, I don't think so. I think that the two pieces that I have, and I did matching nightstands with this, so I will show those in my um, final result photograph, but they did the same exact application on the nightstands as I'm doing on this headboard. Just know that this opaque colored clear coat will dry absolutely clear and you will not see it. So, just be careful when you're smoothing it with your hands. A really good rule of thumb is if you take a piece of saran wrap and bundle it up in your hand, you can use that because then you won't apply as much pressure to get it to stick. You know, depending on how big your piece of tissue paper is, sometimes it's harder. And I, I have ripped tissue paper, I can't tell you how many times, because I am pressing too hard or it's gotten too wet. And so just be careful. If you do rip it, no biggie. You can always fix it with some paint later on. Um, nobody's going to tell but you. So don't be hard on yourself. Just give yourself some grace. Now I thought, oh, maybe I should add another one. No. Sometimes lesser is better. Sometimes don't go overboard and put too much stuff, even though I really like that yellow flower. I thought, yeah, no, we'll just save that for another project. That could be used on a small little box, a jewelry box, a candlestick. Save all your bits and pieces and uh, you will, it'll be worth it. So I have a piece of sandpaper in my hand. This is a 150 grit. I'm going to show you how to easily remove that excess and make it be a straight line. So there's a corner right there. We're just sanding right along that corner. That's going to act as our cut. Boom. Boom. That is the easiest way to cut tissue paper. You don't have to use a pair of scissors. You just got to use a piece of sandpaper. <clears throat> so now we're going to go back with the gray. And the gray that we're using is actually Dixie Bell's Gravel Road, one of my favorite grays. You can use any kind of paint you want, you guys. Um, any kind of chalk paint. Just know that I do offer all of these products on my website, Tona Transformations, 
com, and you are just going to apply a second coat of paint. This is where the magic starts. This is where the adding the texture and the layers comes to life. So as you're adding more paint, um, and if you use a good quality chalk paint, you're going to have more workability time than if you use a cheap brand of paint. So go see, you know, a local person that does this if, if unless you want to order from me, but you know, there's a lot of people out there that sell brands of chalk paint all over the nation. I'm located in Nampa, Idaho. I do next day shipping during regular business days. So you can order from me or like I said, find somebody local that does it. So this is a second coat of paint. The paint, uh, we want it to stay wet in this second part application. So I am adding a little more paint, making sure I get it on there really well. I'm gonna grab a, a fine mist sprayer and I'm going to go ahead and mist the paint, taint, painted surface. The reason I'm doing this is it's going to help with the next step. So I'm just spraying a little bit of water, just regular old water on here. Um, this is a fine mist sprayer. I am going to use salt wash. I happen to have a little container of it. Um, I was out of my big container. I usually order it in the jumbo size. And I'm going to just sprinkle it on here because the paint is wet. We just added water and we just added um, the salt wash right on top. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit on here while the paint is wet. doesn't matter if it gets on the paper. It's only going to stick where it's wet. So we're going to go ahead and just add a little. We're going to kind of glop it on there. You can use your fingers. You can use a spoon. You can use, I'm using a little rubber spatula. You can use the little container that it, um, the little measuring cup to just plop it on there. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's just kind of supposed to be random. After you've done this, you're going to grab your water and you are going to spray over the entire thing. You're going to wet the salt wash. This will ensure that it actually sticks to the paint. Are you thinking, what the heck is this crazy lady doing? She just ruined that whole thing. <laughs> there is a method to my madness. Don't give up on me yet. Keep watching. You're going to just keep doing it. You're going to add your second coat. Um... And you've got to, like I stopped in the middle and did the water and the salt wash because I didn't want it to dry. So then on the sides, I have a little bit of gray space over there. I'm going to add the gray paint. I'm going to wet it. I'm going to add the salt wash. I'm going to basically try to keep the texture all in the middle panel of this. The two side rails um, that go up, I'm going to keep them gray. I'm going to add texture in the middle only, just on this piece, and you will see why in the end result. It's okay to paint over your paper. Actually, I recommend it, so guess what? You get rid of, remember how we cut the paper? If these were in straight lines, it'd be really hard to cover up the lines. But since they're jiggy-jaggy, willy-nilly, very easy to do with some paint and some texture. So there we did it again. Painted, sprayed it with water, dropped the salt wash, and now we're going to spray it again. You can also use, if you use a Dixie Belle product, Sea Spray is another derivative of it. Miscellaneous has Texture Magic. It's all basically the same kind of product. It is a texture additive. You can either add it in paint, but I'm kind of doing a reverse texture where I am adding it on top of the paint. So I'm going to take two colors that I picked. The first one is called Vintage Duck Egg. This is Dixie Belle Paint. Vintage Duck Egg is a really cool color. And I am going to pat it on or tap it on over the top of the salt wash. The salt wash has dried. Like it's been dried for probably three or four hours. So it's good and hard. The paint's dry. Everything's dry. So when I go over the top, I'm just tapping. My brush will get a little glummy with um, the the stuff that's on, you know, that's on there, the salt wash, um, or whatever texture additive you use. <clears throat> I'm just going to tap, 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 tap. And I'm going to cover over that. It's going to just start coming to life pretty soon. 
I am using Vintage Duck Egg. And then I'm going to go in with a darker green color, which is like an army green. It's called Colored Greens. That's also a Dixie Belle paint. And kind of blend it in while the paint is still wet. So we're just doing Vintage Duck Egg, just covering up. If I were to brush side to side strokes, I would move that salt wash and the reason that the salt wash is there is it's going to give me what I call a resistive layer. So the salt wash is resisting down on top of the gray paint. Now I've done the whole headboard and I am going and it's dry. It's been a couple more hours. This is kind of a labor process thing because you can't just do it all at once. You got to wait for everything to dry. I grab my putty knife and I am scraping off the salt wash okay this is where the magic happens this is where it suddenly comes together so i added the vintage duck egg and the collard greens just in random forms kind of blending them together i am scraping it off after it's dry and what this is going to do is wherever you see the white it's actually going to be gray because that's the resistive layer so remember when we started with the dark gray paint and we put the salt wash on top and then we tapped on top of that what that did was protect the gray so now you always wondered how they got those how artists get the natural looking chippiness well that's how we do it it's my secret that i'm sharing with you and it's just so much fun and it will give you texture upon texture that you've never dreamed that you could possibly do so you're going to take your putty knife and just start scraping, not scraping hard enough that you're going to like go down to the wood, which if you do, it's no big deal, but you're going to scrape and scrape and just take off that layer of dried salt wash. Now you won't be able to tell that there's gray underneath there because the salt wash kind of leaves this funky residue, which is fine. You can wipe it off with a rag. You can spray it with water so that you can see what it's going to look like which I'm going to do right here. See, it's gray underneath there. It's just because the salt wash just leaves a residue. Or you can just take some um, chalk paint wax right over the top and it'll do the same thing. But for um, visual purposes, I thought I would show you what it's going to look like. So we're going to wipe it off. So the next thing you're going to do is I'm going to grab some uh, wax, chalk paint wax. And I actually prefer um, Wise Owl's wax because it is an oil-based wax. I love how creamy it is and that's Wise Owl paint and you can't really tell the difference here but I am actually applying it and this is going to seal my chalk paint. This is where it starts to get fun. It's going to seal the chalk paint and I'm going to really move it into those grooves because there's little divots everywhere. It's kind of hard to see from this angle but the salt wash will create a little white residue so you're going to really get that um, wax in those grooves you can tell by the way i'm holding that brush i'm really pushing it in and it's going to get rid of the white residue so we're almost done we're going to go ahead and you can tell you can't even tell where the flowers started and stopped so see the gray see the texture so now i'm going to take some dark wax and i like the dark wax from diy paint like i said earlier i do retail all of this stuff i sell five mm. different um, brands of chalk style paint so you have a lot to choose from and I pick and choose which I like best from each line so I like the paint I like Dixie Bell's paint I like Wise Owl's wax I like DIY's dark wax I mean they're all interchangeable and if you only have like Dixie Bell wax use it it's okay but I'm just using what I have on hand and what I love so I'm adding some dark wax and what that's done is it's added some shadowing and some features so now my my headboard is not um what do you call flat it has dimension right so when you add dark wax the idea is to have a clear wax barrier first hence the reason i did the clear wax first and also it seals the paint remember the tissue paper already has a sealer over the top right so there's no chance of it getting ruined it's not like a paper anymore it's got a clear coat over the top i'm going to take some of that dark wax and run it around those flowers because it's going to give them some dimension, some shadowing. All of a sudden, they start to pop off the piece, right? 
all of a sudden they're super cool and I've got a clear coat over that so I can go right over those flowers if I want to deepen them a little bit give them a little more of a allure of depth and dimension and I'm just going to ever so slightly rub it off now I gotta say on video the the dramaticness of dark wax is very hard to see but in real life and I will show you some close-ups here in a second you can really see it and it's just those little tiny features that set you apart from everybody else right add the little touches the little bits of dark wax the little bits of highlights so that you can actually be the artist that everybody strives to be now these pieces are already going to be in somebody's house at the end of the day <laughs> and i have two matching nightstands which i will photograph for you guys but Sometimes, you know, just lesser is better. Like I said, just a couple little things off the tissue paper. You can't even tell that that's not hand painted on there, right? I don't know how to hand paint flowers. Heck no. But now I want you to see up close how much texture we got out of this whole thing. Do you see how yummy that is? Do you see where the salt wash lifted off the gray paint and then just left us with those little craters? So now it looks like it's been used and it's been old. Look at how delicious that is. A little bit of dark wax, a little bit of clear wax. It's yummy, isn't it? I mean, this is what it's all about, you guys. Sanded it down a little bit, distressed it a little bit. Go out and enjoy. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.